Welcome to the Nala Motor Mini Talk. And today we are very happy to invite today's speaker, Uger Bozuk, who comes from the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems. And uh, he is working with the professor Matty City. And his talk will be on uh, this PNAS paper. And uh, let's, let's welcome Uger to share his research. Please go ahead, Uger. Thank you. Thank you very much for the very nice introduction. Um, let me introduce myself briefly again. Uh, my name is Ur Bozyuk. I'm from Turkey. I'm a PhD student at Metin Cities Group, located in Stuttgart. Today I'm going to talk about our recent PNAS paper titled as Shape, sorry, Shape Anisotropy Governed Locomotion of Surface Micro Rollers on Vessel Like Microtopographies Against Physiological Flows. So before jumping to that paper, jumping to the paper, I would like to give background information about why we explore microrobotic research and what is what's its advantages compared to conventional medicine. So, as you all you may know, uh, microrobotic delivery could potentially offer unique advantages such as concentrated drug on targeted area, reduction of overall dose, thus increase of treatment efficiency that are not currently presented in conventional uh, treatment modalities, such as nanoparticles. Uh, currently, like passive systems are mainly used, such as nanoparticles or like, molecule-based drugs that are distributed throughout the body, which is very harmful for the, treatments, uh, for the treatment of diseases like cancer. So for example, if you think about the cancer, it's highly, it may be highly localized and you may want to concentrate on to the drug, to the diseased area. And um, you can do conceptually do such thing using micro robots. And circulatory system seems to be a viable option for the navigation of micro robots. If you think uh, circulatory system, uh, you can reach any cell or any tissue in the body through a circulatory system. And um, of course it is very, um, it's a very hard uh, task to do, if you think, because there are you no know, huge flows in the circulatory system. It's a little bit unknown for the application of the micro robots, but uh, that is, uh, that's the topic uh, I'm doing it with my PhD. As a fun fact, if you search uh, keywords like micro robot or nano robots, you will end up with such illustrations as you've shown in, the, you know, in this slide. And you know, micro or nano robots are in bloodstream. In fact, there are very few, very few studies about it because it's very hard task to do. And let me a little bit talk about the circulatory system. Uh, this is a brief overview of the systemic circulation. So there is a hierarchy in circulatory system. There are big vessels and small vessels that are vessels that carries oxygenated or clean blood like aorta, arterial, and the oxygen exchange happens in capillary. And then the deoxygenated or so-called black blood is carried by, back to the heart. So these are the dimensions of the vessels in the body. Uh, the top you see like for the aorta, 25 millimeter, and the speed is huge, 400 millimeter per second. So I just wanted to show this to, uh, so you have an idea what type of speeds are, uh, what type of flows are in the, um, blood vessels. So it's not slow compared to the speed of the micro, micro robots. So blood vessels, there are in the, in the blood, there are red blood cells uh, at very, very high concentration. There are white blood cell platelets, and they're also suspended in a liquid called plasma that, that has similar viscosity with water. And the inner layer of the blood vessels are covered with uh, endothelial cells. And in fact, endothelial cells look like this. They make a topology in the scale of two to six micrometer, uh, which may be important for the locomotion of surface enabled micro robots. For example, if you have a system that goes onto, onto the sur vessel surface, uh, it's definitely a parameter. I mean, the topography is a definitely a parameter that needs to be taken into account. So in microrobotics fields, there are mostly uh, proof of principle works. People have explored different motion mechanisms. People have shown drug gene delivery or some other things. I would say this field is in, still it's in uh, exploratory phase. And circuitry system, you need to have a microrobotic system uh, that can go against the law. 
If you do that, you have full control of the uh, microrobotic system. So you can move in circuitry system. So uh, this is the oldest article I could find relevant to this subject. So uh, there is a catalytic micromotor here that go against flow, but of course the environment is not very realistic. This catalytic microrobot is powered by hydrogen peroxide, but it still uh, it's, it was still shown that the catalytic microrobot could go against the flow. And there is an, another article. There is a nanomotor moving in the diluted blood, static blood. And last year. Um, Schmidt Group published a particle in ACS Nano where they have shown they were able to locomote, they were able to control sperm powered microrobots in uh, realistic flow of conditions. So there are so few works as you see, and the reason is very obvious. And uh, because the blood flow velocity is very high at the vessels, and compared, especially compared to the speed of the microrobots. But still, uh, there is a parabolic profile in the blood vessels, uh, meaning in the, in the middle, the velocity is maximum, and at the walls, uh, flow velocity is significantly reduced. So that can be utilized as a, as a nice mechanism to move the micro robots. And there are also some other uh, limitations. The blood vessels are very crowded. You see in this video, this is actually uh, real blood vessels uh, of a goldfish. Uh, you see like it's highly crowded environment. And of course there are some other, there could, should be some other limitations that is not explored yet. A year ago we published our, uh, an article in Science Robotics where we have shown uh, a micro roller system uh, could I, was able to locomote uh, in realistically high uh, flow velocities. So in that, in that study, we have spherical micro robots. The half side is uh, co covered with magnetic material. Uh, it is a, it's called, they are called Janus particles. And they are, the locomotion is enabled by rotational magnetic fields. So when you rotate the particles, uh, rotational motion is converted to translational motion uh, by the presence of a near wall. And actually, the microrobotic system resulted in very high velocities. Um, for example, this is a split plot of an eight micrometer micro robot, uh, eight micrometer micro robot. So the velocities could go up to eight uh, six hundred micrometer per second, which corresponds to approximately eighty body lengths per second. And then we have shown the potential of this microrobotic system against uh, physiologically high flow velocities. So you see some example, a small microrobot going against flow. And we also have shown we were able to steer these uh, microrobots against uh, physiologically high flow levels. So while in this study, we mostly performed the experiments on the flat surfaces. But uh, yeah, as you know, like nothing is flat in the body. As I told you earlier, the vessel walls are covered with endothelial cells. So when you do the experiments in flat surfaces, the motion is highly monotonic, meaning there is no unexpected speed changes. The speed is the same at all the positions. You see, like there is no um, glitch or anything. They they are able to. They are free to move. But when we perform the same experiments on cell cover surfaces, so these are endothelial cells, like in found in blood vessels, the motion becomes a little bit weird. So speed was much slower, and yeah, motion wasn't monotonic. See from the, as you see from the uh, tracks, green tracks. It's highly, you know, highly uh, glitchy, and yeah, and the micro roller was able to move between the cells in some way. So this is the like sort of the micro robot we used in the study, science robotic study. In another set of experiments, we realized uh, when a micro roller shape is anisotropic at the same size scale, the motion is like much much better. So and we decided to explore this further. And so that's how PNAS article, yeah, that's how we come up with this published PNAS article. So essentially, in the PNAS article, the question is rather simple. We have two microbiotic systems. First one is single 
size is 8.5 micrometer, and second one is doublet. The length is uh, seven micrometer. They have very similar, their, their size scale is similar in the sense of length. So the question is very simple. Which one is better on topographical surfaces in, blow con in flow conditions? And of course, why one is better than the other? As I told you earlier, uh, we already knew that doublet was, was better, but yeah, we explored why this is the case. So this is our conceptual schematic. And we have two different micro rollers. One is spherical one, other one is doublet one in a similar size with the single. So single is slower than doublet essentially, or yeah. And single may is prone to fail on topographies while doublet is able to move against flow on the topographies. This is the whole concept. The fabrication of the micro rollers is rather simple. We make uh, self-assembled monolayers of silica particles, and then we sputter nickel and gold sequentially. So that's how they look. Single particles look like this, and doublet look like this. This is doublet is self-assembled particle chain. Each particle is three micrometer that has a thousand nanometer nickel on it. It's, you see, it's sort of spherical, and they self-assemble them in this way. And uh, fabrication is we basically mix the particles and then self-assemble themselves. It's magnetic. They're hardly locked to each other. And there are always like single particles, three particles, or four particles in the population as well. But for the experiments, we only recorded the doublets. So as I told you earlier, the locomotion is enabled by rotating magnetic fields. We pre-magnetize the magnetic cap direction to auto field direction, and we basically give out of plane rotational fields. So out of uh, plane rotational fields rotate the particles, and this rotation uh, is, uh, causes a translational motion by the presence of a near ball. And we characterize their speeds on the flat surfaces. You see on the left, there's a, there are speeds of single and doublet. And they are very similar, and single being slightly higher than doublet because it has slightly higher size than doublet. And uh, they single could go uh, 600, 600 micrometer per second, and doublet is around 500 micrometer per second. But when you compare body length per second, the insets, they are rather similar. So this is a video showing the locomotion of the micro rollers. First at 10 hertz, when they are very small, and they are very slow. Single is moving like this, and doublet is yeah, moving like this. They have very similar speeds. And when the frequency is high, rotation frequency is high, of course, they become faster. This is actually very fast. Again, on the flat surfaces, we perform some other experiments against flow. So now there is a flow, and we characterize their speeds with respect to different frequencies. Again, they, they resulted in very similar translational speeds in the presence of flow on flat surfaces. So this is a video. There is a flow, and single is able to locomote against the flow. And doublet micro rollers are the same. And we also shown we were able to steer doublet micro rollers in a very controlled way against flow. So, uh, so far, the whole point is to show these two different micro robotic systems are comparable because they have very similar translational velocities on flat surfaces. Then we started to study effect of, effect of the topography for these two micro robotic systems. So to study the effect of the microtopography, we microfabricated such structures. We very much simplified the microtopographies. We fabric microfabricated structures with two photon polymerization system with different heights and different slopes. And we, to tune the slopes, we used basic sigmoid function where the parameter C1 changes the slope, as you see. C1 is equal to one is less slope C1 is equal to 300 is very steep. So these are the SCM images of H is equal to six uh, micrometer, six micrometer volts with different slopes. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a wall with less slope and this is the, the second one is the very steep one. 
And so these are the SCM images for all uh, wall heights. We fabricated three different wall heights starting from two to six. We selected these uh, wall heights because they are in the range of uh, the topography of the topography of the uh, topography of the uh, endothelial cells. Uh, just for you to know, uh, even though, like we say, these are these walls are two micrometer, uh, because of the fabrication, they're actually slightly bigger than two, or like uh, slightly bigger than the desired size. The all wall heights have like 200 nanometer extra wall height, just for you to know. Then we perform the experiments. On the very left, uh, we actuate the particles with uh, we actuate the particles with 180 hertz very fast. And this is the wall with least slope. As you see, the single particle has no problem climbing the wall. But then, uh, yeah, so this is the wall shown on the left with the SCM image. But when we perform the same experiment on the steep wall, something is interesting happens. The single particle is not able to locomote over the wall. It's actually like uh, there, it's translational velocity goes to zero and it's it is hydrodynamically trapped to the wall. As you see, like there is a constant rotation, but no translation. Interestingly, again, when we decrease the rotational uh, speed to 10 Hertz, 18 times, the same particle is able to locomote, climb the locomote over or climb the wall with ease, with no problem. Again, for the Dubret micro roller, uh, we are, our initial experimental observations was they were successful on the topography. So on the steepest topography at very high, uh, high speed, the doublet was able to locomote over the wall with an ease. So as you see, like it climbs to the wall as if there is no wall. Its speed like didn't even change much. Then we made those uh, phase diagrams showing the experimental results, sorry, experimental results. At 10 Hertz, single is successful at any of all types, but when the uh, velocity is or rotational speed is higher, it starts to fail at the topographies. So it is important to know that uh, if you want to go upstream, if you go, if you want to go against the flow, you need to be on, you know, you need to be on the fast side. So if you go with 10 Hertz, you won't be able to locomote against the flow. On the other hand, doublet uh, success was successful at any wall type where single had failed with some of them. So we performed some other demonstrations. So we have shown, we have shown some other demonstrations now against flow. We have similar wall type, but now there is a flow from right to left and actuation is from left to right. So the single micro roller, again, translational velocity is zero and trapped there, but the doublet particle, again, move, on, move over the topography with an ease, as if there is no topography at all, showing the superiority of the doublet. Then we made more complicated structures, 3D, like vessel-like micro topographies, but again, like 3D printed ones. So we performed the experiments in two different configurations. The first one is called isotropic structures. The so single now is able to move uh, locomote between the valleys formed between the topographies, see again, but with a slower manner. But it's not climbing over the topography, it's basically using the flat part. But the doublet, again, was successful moving over the walls. And the second structure type is anisotropic, like, uh, you know, uh, different than the other type. There are now uh, smaller valleys between from the topographies. Now single is unsuccessful. If you see again, single has no net translation, even though there is constant rotation. But the doublet, again, was successful over the topographies. One step further, uh, we made this vessel on chip system to mimic the vessels, um, to mimic the vessels, real vessels. 
We cultured endothelial cells, uh, the type of cells found in the blood vessels, in these microfluidic channels uh, under the flow conditions. And the endothelial cells uh, elongated themselves against the flow. So yeah, this is the sort of configuration, elongated configuration found in real vessels. Then we performed similar experiments on the real vessel topographies. So these are the result of the experiments on endothelialized microchannels. There's a single micro roller, move a little bit, but again, it's oscillating basically, it's hydrodynamically trapped. Yeah, it's hydrodynamically trapped and there is no net translation. And then we cancel the um, rotational fields, it will go with uh, the flow direction you will see here. So when we were able to capture single and the doublet in a similar field of field, uh, it was clear that doublet miles more successful, single goes, doublet eventually leaves from the field of field. And another example, single is again hydrodynamically trapped, but doublet is able to move again. So, so far, like it is very clear that doublet is superior to single on the topographies. But of course, you should ask why this is the case. So to understand this, we very much simplified uh, the system. And so this is the force balance on a micro roller in like a static case. There's a force balance in the Stokes regime. When a micro roller rotates with uh, angular velocity with omega, it creates a propulsion force to its translational direction. And this propulsion of force is balanced out with drag force at at the x, x uh, axis. On the y axis, there is of course a gravitational, um, there is a gravitation to the bottom and there is a repulsion to the top and the lift force. However, the lift force in our scale, more, less than 10 micrometer is still negligible. So uh, if you equate the uh, propulsion force and the drag force, so these are the expressions for propulsion and drag force, uh, which includes viscosity, uh, the radius of the micro roller, uh, speed, and some correction factors. You will end up with an expression for the translational velocity, which is a function of the size and, of course, angular velocity. You know, if you think if you have more angular velocity, you will translate with a higher speed. And uh, I forgot to tell this is also very important lubrication distance. Uh, which is actually exaggerated in this sketch. It's usually order of nanometers in our case. Uh, the higher, the bigger the lubrication distance, the slower the micro roller. It's important to know. And so we hypothesize that when a micro roller approaches to a topography like this, there is a new force balance. So there is a new a resistive force in arbitrary direction, which has y and x components. And when you make the same uh, force balance on x direction, you end up with such uh, you such um, expression for the translational velocity. So if you see that if the resistive force on the x axis is too high, you realize that translational velocity could go to zero, which actually happened in some of our experiments. And to uh, to uh, understand the nature of these resistive forces, we have performed computational fluid dynamics analysis, where we had a micro roller with a fixed position. And what we did was we changed the distance, we uh, get closer to the micro roller to the wall, little by little, with different frequencies, with different or angular speeds. And we measured the forces on y and x axis. And the computational fluid dynamics analysis revealed that uh, on the single micro roller, uh, forces acting on x and y axis or the resistive forces on x and y axis are significantly higher than doublet, which could explain, which explains uh, the superior performance on doublet on the topographies. So to conclude, uh, there are two uh, take home messages. Uh, one is topography is actually a new dimension for the surface enabled micro robots and should definitely be taken into account when you design such systems. 
And the second one is slender bodied macro robots could be superior for the navigation of blood vessels, thanks to the favorable uh, fluid dynamics, fluid dynamic interactions near topographies. So we uh, propose that you know such slender bodies or rod like bodies are much more superior. So I would like to acknowledge the authors of the paper, especially uh, Yunus Alapan, who is the co-leading author of the paper, yes. Amir Reza Agakani, Mohamed Yunusa, and of course my supervisor Metin Sitti, and Professor uh, Professor Wei Wang, and Nanomotor Update for organizing these nice talks, and Zi Chan for you know uh, for the email you know directions. So I can have your questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for inspiring and wonderful talk. Now we are moving on to the Q&A session. And if the mm -hmm. audience have uh, the, the question, just unmute yourself and ask us questions. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, if there is a question on the chat, I cannot see, sorry. Um, I read it. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, so maybe I start first. Uh, sure. So, uh, Hugo, can you explain why these nanoparticles assemble in that configuration, like the equator of these uh, nanoparticles are mm -hmm. perpendicular to each other? Yeah, so actually, the, uh, let me go to that slide. That's a very nice question. So uh, we pre-magnetized the particles to the outer plane direction before the assembly. So ideally, they should assemble from the silica side, but you know, magnet-magnet interaction is scaled with the size. The, the closer them, the interaction increases you know, exponentially. So I think this is the most you know, favorable uh, site for the assembly because it cannot assemble from the silica side, like to the, you know, but the back part, because the distance is too far. So that magnetic interactions will be very, very weak. And they wouldn't assemble each other, but they will be, you know, two separate particles. So this is, I think, easiest point uh, for the assembly of the particles. So that's why I think they assemble themselves in that direction. Okay. Thank you for your answer. You're welcome. Uh, hi, uh, I have a Hello. question. Um, could you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I have read your paper and uh, seen that only two blade micro rollers were used in your experiments. Um, so I wonder if you have tested the triplet micro rollers or even longer micro rollers. Uh, if so, do they move more difficult or easier? Um, yeah, that's a very nice question. As we explained in the paper, actually like in a side section, when you assemble the particles, there are uh, different particle types like triplets, four particles, five particles. But uh, the doublet is somehow the you know, most favorable one. For example, if you performed experiment against flow, I think because of the favorable drag, doublet particles were only the ones that can, can go against flow. For example, longer chains were not able to go because their size is bigger, which means there will be much more drag force on them. Okay. So that doublet was, you know, doublet was the most favorable one for, you know, yeah. And oh, yeah, okay. I would say, uh, yeah, the main thing is, you know, when you have bigger, when you have more longer chains, your effective lengths become, you know, bigger and bigger. And your drag force is also become bigger, which is bad, of course, against flow. So oh, yeah. Okay. Explanation. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> 